today we are looking at 13.4, which is graphing linear equations using slope intercept form. So our canned statements for today, I can find slopes and y-intercepts of graphs of linear equations, and I can graph linear equations written in slope intercept form. All right, so intercepts. Uh, intercepts are basically where the line is hitting the x-axis and the y-axis. So the x-intercept of a line is where um, that line hits the x-axis and it is the value where y equals zero. So that's the x-intercept right here. y is zero, what is x? And then the y-intercept is the opposite. Um, when x is zero, what is the value of y? And that's where the line hits the y-axis. So um, we'll be looking at different intercepts and different types of equations. But for our equation today, slope-intercept form, that equation tells you both what the slope is and the y-intercept. So something that is in slope-intercept form, this is our generic formula for it, y equals mx plus b. m is our number in front of the letter x, and b is our y-intercept. And the equation is solved for y. That's called slope-intercept form because you can see the slope and you can see the y-intercept. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our first problem here. It says, find the slope and the y-intercept of the graph in each um, linear equation. So if something's already solved for slope-intercept form, you don't really have to do any calculations. There isn't any work to show. You should be able to look at it and just know what the slope and y-intercept is. If it's not solved for y, such as b there, y minus five equals three halves x, then you have to solve for y before you know the slope and y-intercept. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these. So our, our plan here is to solve for y. The coefficient of the x is our slope, that's m. And then the other number is the y-intercept b. I'm not exactly sure why mathematicians chose m to mean slope and b to mean y-intercept, but um, that's just the letters that they're used um, in this particular formula. Okay, so if I am looking at my equation, y equals negative 4x minus 2, that negative 4, that's the coefficient of x, that's going to be my slope. And then I have to take a look at the next number, and I do need to include the sign in front of it. That is minus 2, it means negative 2 is our y-intercept. So no calculations there, I just have to look at the equation. B, it's not in slope-intercept form already because it's got a minus 5 on the side with the y. So we have to solve it like we've solved the equations before for y, um, which is using order of operations to get rid of um, anything, doing it backwards to get rid of anything that's on the side with the y. So this was a minus 5, so I added 5 on both sides. Um, minus 5 plus 5, those cancel out. So I'm left with just y on that side of the equation. And then over here, I have 3 halves x plus 5 slope-intercept form. You're going to want that x term first before your number without the letter. So 3 halves x plus 5. And then I um, look to see what my slope and my y-intercept is. So this 3 halves is our coefficient of x. It's the number in front of the x. That's our slope. And then the other number by itself that's positive 5, so that's our y-intercept. All right, so same type of problem. You have two more equations here to try. Go ahead, take a minute, and pause the video and write down your slope and y-intercept for these. Okay, let's go ahead and double-check your answers. So in this first one, it's already in slope-intercept form. Your slope, number in front of the x, that's the 3. And then the y-intercept, that's the negative 7. You do need to make sure you pay attention to that minus sign and include that as part of your y-intercept. 2, you had to solve it. y minus 1 equals negative 2 thirds x. So get rid of a minus 1 with a plus 1. Negative 1 plus positive 1 is 0, leaves you with just the y. And then negative 2 thirds x plus 1. They're not like terms. You can't actually add them. You just write them together. So now that I have my equation, I look for my coefficient for my x, negative 2 thirds, that's my slope. And then I look for my other number, that's not with the x, that's my y-intercept, and that's going to be 1. All right, so um, slope-intercept form is very um, handy because it is a fast, fast way to graph. It's a lot faster than doing what we did in 13.1, which is making a table and picking five points and solving the equation five times and then graphing those points. Slope-intercept form is a lot faster than that. 
Um, so here's how we use slope intercept form to graph. It says graph y equals negative 3x plus 3. Identify the x-intercept. Now, it doesn't say you have to use slope intercept form. If you want to use a table, you can use a table. But what I'm going to show you is a shortcut for graphing when you have slope intercept form. All right, so here are the steps. You start by finding your slope and your y-intercept. So my slope was negative 3. That's like negative 3 over 1. And my y-intercept is 3. Y-intercept tells you where you're going to hit the y-axis. So I went up to where 3 is on the y-axis, and I made a point. And then because my slope is negative, instead of going up 3 over 1, I'm going down 3 and over 1. So from my y-intercept, I went down 1, 2, 3 over 1 and made a spot. Now really, that's all you need, but I like to do a couple more points just to um, make sure everything's nice and straight and lined up. So I would go down another 3, 1, 2, 3 over 1, make my point, and then I connect them with a line that extends through my entire graph. Then it says identify the x-intercept, which means where does it hit the x-axis. So on the x-axis, if I look here, the x-axis, it's hitting the x-axis at 1. So my x-intercept is 1, and that's the point 1, 0. That's my x-intercept. All right, let's take a look at this next one. It says the cost y in dollars of taking a taxi x miles is y equals 2 and a half x plus 2. A, graph the equation. B, interpret the y-intercept and the slope. So we've got to do a couple things here. All right, so here's my graph. I actually um, took this one out of the book just to save myself a little bit of time. Um, we do have title on the top, taxi cost. I have miles on the bottom. I have dollars on the side as my labels. Um, because we have our positive two that there at the end, that's our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is two. We start at zero, two. And then they took that two and a half and they wrote it as a fraction seven um sorry not seven i'm looking at seven here um five over two and they said that's like going up five over two or you could have gone up two and a half and gone over one and gone up another two and a half and gone over one that ended up at the point two seven and then they connected it to make their line they extended it through the graph with an arrow on the end because we're only dealing with a situation that where positive numbers make sense we're only using a one quadrant graph here and then I put my interpretation down at the bottom. The y-intercept is 2, which means it costs $2 to go 0 miles. And then the slope is 2.5, which means it costs $2.5 for each mile. Okay, so here are two more to try. Go ahead and pause the video and try both of these problems. All right, let's go ahead and unpause and check to see if we did these correctly. Okay, so for number three, your slope is one, your y-intercept is negative four. So on your graph, you start on the y-axis and you go down to negative four. That, there wasn't a number in front of that axis. That means the slope of one. That means you're going up one over one, making a point. Up one over one, making a point up one over one making a point and so on until you have two or three points and then you can extend your line it did ask us to find the x-intercept your x-intercept is four because when you continue that pattern it hits that x-axis at four then over here for number four we have a slope of negative one half that's our coefficient we have a y-intercept of one that's the other part of the equation so that means on our graph, we start at that y-intercept of 1. So on the y-axis here, I went to the number 1. I put my point. And then negative 1 half. It's a negative slope. So this time I'm going down into the right instead of up into the right. So I go down 1 over 2 for each one. So I go down 1 point. I go over 2. I make my graph. My point. Down 1 over 2. Make my point. Down 1 over 2. Again, 2 or 3 points is fine. Connect them with a line. Make sure that line extends through the whole graph space. All right, so my x-intercept, where did it hit the x-axis? It hit the x-axis at the value 2. So my x-intercept is 2.